All right, this is going to be a video on setting up like margins and bleeds in Procreate because uh, this is coming off of a response to one of the videos I did uh, regarding my comic book artwork that I do for my Real Material comic book series. Um, and that had to deal with, um, you know, working in Procreate for print. Um, more or less, the question was, you know, how do I build in bleeds into my artwork in Procreate? So, as you know, I do both, you know, digital work and traditional artwork for my comic book series. Um, I just kind of seem to have this thing where I, I kind of bounce around when it comes to these kind of things. So really my, my main thing is that I, I like working in both mediums, but lately, as of this video here, I have been doing mostly traditional artwork here, uh, pencil, ink on paper. But to get back to the original question, I'm going to open up my uh, iPad here and we'll go into Procreate right here. Oops, that's Patreon, sorry. That's Procreate. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to open up this page here and I just want to show something as far as the settings that I have on here. Okay, so in Procreate, the main thing that you have to do, and this is what I do, I should I should back up because I'm used to working 11 by 17, right? So my reference, my point of view is going to be from working with this traditional size, keep in mind, but I think it can apply to here as well uh, and the iPad. So if I click on the little wrench icon and I go to my canvas information, yeah, as this comes up here, I'll bring this closer here, move this light out of the way, um, so we can see what's going on here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So about this artwork, you can see that the dimensions have a pixel width of 3300 by 5100, but basically that translates into real world physical dimensions that I understand and that I'm used to working as being 11 inches by 17 inches with a resolution of 300 dots per inch. So when you look at that, the main thing that I do is I make sure that this template, this template that's in here is pretty much a replication of this 11 by 17 board that I draw on a piece of paper, right? So what you have to do and what I do is I recreated my own template in Illustrator, pulled it into Procreate as a JPEG file. And let me show that template here, uh, which is basically the blue line in this instance. So as you can see here now, oops, get that back in, in view. So as you can see here, the the main thing that, that we're looking at is that I have created the bleed inside the 11 by 17. So when I'm drawing, I, I can see where the trim is. So this is the bleed. This solid border here represents the final edge of the comic book in real dimensions, proportions here. And that's similar to what I have here. So what I have here, here's the Strathmore drawing paper. You can see, and I'm gonna try and see if I can zoom in back here. It's very similar. We have the trim and you have the finished edge. Trim, finished edge. So to answer the question, Yes, there are bleeds built into the entire document, but within the document, not outside of it. If some of you are familiar with uh, InDesign, you can lay out a book or whatever and specify bleeds outside of the document. With Procreate, you can't do that, at least in this version. Uh, I have an older version of Procreate. I even have an older iPad that I'm using right now. Um, I've never really upgraded, but just to let you know, this is how I set up my page. Okay, so to review, it's 11 by 17, the document. I create a separate template in Illustrator, create my own little you know, blue line here. It's got my logo, it's got space to write the name of the book, the issue number, the page number. And again, it mimics what's here. And so when I 
approach doing digital drawing, I approach it the same way as I approach this as far as setting up the blades and trims. And that's important because when you go to print this, or before you go to print this, I have to bring it into a page layout program. And I use Adobe InDesign for that. I know lately a lot of people like to throw shade on Adobe InDesign. Um, I use it because that's what I've used for years. I'm used to it. I know how it works. Uh, I, am, I am fine with what the program is able to do and what it gets me, what it, what it allows me to do in return. So I'm, I'm all good with that. So that's how I do that here. Um, again, I'm basing everything on this very real world template here that I use, this uh, artboard. And these artboards are based on, or they come from this right here. This is the Bristol board that I use. So you can see, yeah, you can find these online. I think I got this one on Amazon, but I've certainly seen these at Michael's stores before. The Michael's art stores, we've, we've got one here in our area. So yeah, that's how I set up in Procreate. Set up my artwork here. So that way I include the bleeds into the finished size document. Again, you can work whatever size you want on this. I just prefer 11 by 17 because the final size that I'm aiming for for print is traditional comic size, which is something like six and five eighths and by 10 and a quarter, I think. So uh, next I'll show what I do in InDesign to use the bleeds in uh, those borders. So in InDesign, this is where I take my artwork, my comic book pages, and assemble them to set them up for print. So right now, here's that page we were just looking at here. You can see that here on the, the right side here. Uh, but this is essentially my, my entire comic book series. This is the fourth issue, which you can see on my website. But as you can see, I, I am building out this fourth issue here. So going back to this one page, just because that's what we used, that's what I showed. Um, the, your earlier part of this video. This page here is now lettered, which I do in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so let's take a look at this InDesign document. I'm gonna change the view here. So you set, I set up my pages in double spread, in spread pages, okay. You can see here on the right hand side, Here's here are all the pages so far. And as far as the document setup itself, if I go into the menu and I go into File, Document Setup, you'll notice the size is 6.625 by 10.25 inches. So that's essentially 6 and 5 eighths by 10 and a quarter. Now that is actual finished size uh, as far as uh, American print comics are concerned. And then if you notice here, um, margins, not so much a critical thing, but I put this just for my own kind of edification when I'm setting up this page. These margins are exactly what they what they are. They are with respect to the InDesign document and I have a 0.375 inch margin uh, top, bottom, left and right. Again, it doesn't affect anything because the artwork's already drawn. But again, just to show you here, my size is 6.625 by 10.25 on these pages here. And again, I don't set them up as individual pages. I draw them that way, I letter them that way, but when it comes to setting up the book, the comic book, you have to set it up in printer spreads. So there's a new term if you haven't heard that before. It's helpful to know that when you're laying out your pages, you set them up as you actually read the pages. This is how you should be drawing your thumbnail so that as you're planning out, you know, your story sequences, your pacing, you have to know what pages start out on the right hand side and which ones are going to be on the left hand side. And then what happens when you turn that right page over and you see the, the left side page and you read left to right. Again, these are for American comic books. So that's all very important. So when I'm laying out my comic book, I do it the same way. So I'm not just drawing a bunch of pages and then hoping that when they marry together, when I Put them in printer, sp printer spreads are going to work. I mean, I'm playing that all out in, during the thumbnail phase, okay? But here, when I'm designing it, it has to be in a booklet so that you can see what these pages look like when they're put together. So like this page here is obviously I drew this as a spread page, meaning uh, there's it's, a, it's double pages, so it spreads left and right. Um, I don't think it's a centerfold, although it might be the centerfold. 
um, but essentially you see the whole page from when you're drawing it. But then when I assemble both pages here, because I don't draw them this way, I get to see how things line up. Like for instance, this page here, which we looked at previously as my example in Procreate, when I put it next to this page, I knew ahead that as I drew this page right here on the left hand side, this bottom panel, I knew it was going to bleed all the way across and I know that when I was setting up the right hand page, I did not want to have something on this page butting right up to it because that's just bad design. Um, I have, you know, I'm trying to actually use less and less of these types of layouts. I really do prefer these kind of layouts, very traditional, uh, that's just me. but. I kind of like the look and feel of just having a white border all the way around. Yeah, with the print technology today though, you can really do whatever you want. But again, you have to just take into account your readers, um, what's clear, what what's readable, what actually helps the story and not necessarily just making art just because you can, you know, bleed every single page. Again, you can do that, totally up to you. It's totally a preference, but again, taking into account like the craft of storytelling I'm, I'm trying to get more into that space. So when I create the pages after I've lettered them in Illustrator, I save them out. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna go to my links palette here. I save them out as .ai files. And when I'm saving them out as a .ai file, I'm making sure to include bleed. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Uh, if I turn the preview off, you can see where the page bleeds, the artwork bleeds on this page, but then if I turn off the preview and I actually show the border, uh, the bleed coming off of the print edge here, the trim edge, I'm sorry, you can see that the artwork bleeds out and that there's plenty of bleed. And again, this right here, this bleed area right here, that is an eighth of an inch. Because if you remember when we, when I drew it on the artboard, it was about an eighth of an inch but remember, this is being pulled in not 100% of the actual size it was drawn, but if we look up here, it's actually being pulled in um, at, actually, I take that back. So the, the thing is, um, when I letter my pages, I forgot, I actually letter them at actual size. So I take the 11 by 17 artwork, pull it into Illustrator, so that the Illustrator file itself is the traditional comic book size of, what do we say, six and five eighths by 10 and a quarter. I make that lettered page, where I do my lettering, the size of the comic. So that way when I pull it in, it's just easier for me to track and it's already been scaled and I don't have to scale it here. Like I, if they were oversized, I could do that. Um, I just did like a little pinch and, pinch and drag to, to change the dimensions, basically increasing the size. But if I do that beforehand, if I plan for that in Illustrator and I make the pages at 100%, or I'm sorry, scale them down to roughly 67%, I think, of the original size of 11 by 17, I can then pull them into InDesign and then have them already just drop right in. Uh, so when I'm creating the these image boxes here in InDesign, I have to make sure that this box right here, this frame, which is a, a text, an image frame, uh, that may not be the actual term, but it's basically a shape rectangular that is designed or set up so that an image can be pulled in. I have it set up to where there is bleed built into that. So whereas the document, just to review here, whereas the document itself is 6.625 by 10.25. Um, let's see, how do I show this right here? I have specified a bleed on the top, bottom, inside and outside of 0.125. Okay, so that 0.125 is right here. So this is the trim. If I pull this out, this is, if I pull this back out, see where that red, red corner is here, right up here, that is now going to the bleed. So the artwork with the final bleed attached to it goes to 6.75 by 10.5. And again, there's no bleed here on this edge. There's no bleed because what happens is in reality, because the way it is printed, it will, this edge right here of the artwork on this right hand 
edge on this left side page, it just prints right up to the edge. There's no need for it to bleed because if it bled onto the sheet that it was on, and this is getting kind of technical, it would look like something amiss on like the other side of the page. So really what I do is I just make sure that, again, going back to Procreate, I just make sure my artboard is 11 by 17. Take that artboard into Adobe Illustrator. I do my lettering there. You know, you can do your lettering if you want in Procreate, but I'll, I'll caution you this. If you letter in Procreate and your artboard is 11 by 17, and then you decide to, to reduce the size of your artboard to pull it in, because I assume you're not gonna print your comic at 11 by 17. You probably want to print it comic book size. Uh, I'm assuming a lot that this is for US dimensions, but the same holds, holds true for what I'm about to say. If you draw your comic book at a large size with the lettering and you do the lettering large enough to read, and then you shrink it, that lettering is, is probably gonna get way too small. So this is the reason why I letter my comics in a separate program with the artwork already scaled and I letter at the actual font size that, that might be anywhere from six seven or eight font uh, with the comic book typeface so anyway this is my process here for setting up the bleeds and margins uh, I know there was a lot more information than probably just saying hey set up your bleeds and margins to this size but this is how I do it and the reasons why so thanks for watching if you like this video want to see more hey subscribe uh, comments are cool and we'll catch you in the next video.